And perhaps the most famous of these studies is the Women's Health Initiative from 2006 in the Journal of the American Medical Association. They took almost 50,000 women and they compared them to a calorie restricted group. And you can see that at baseline, they're eating 1,788 calories and they dropped it to 1,443, a daily deficit of 361 calories. If that translated into fat loss and weight loss, they should be losing 20 to 30 pounds per year from their frames. However, when they compared this calorie restrictive effect, and along with some increased exercise, to people who just followed their natural diet, normal diet, didn't do anything, you see at one year there is a nice difference, but only two kilograms or about five pounds. Those differences largely wane by about three to four years. And by five years, there's no difference between eating and uh, a calorie deficit and not eating. So again, all of our available evidence says that cutting calories doesn't help you lose weight over the long term, which is really what we're interested in. And we're pretty sure why that happens. So we've done so many studies over the years. This is a meta-analysis, which is a compilation of 29 published studies, which shows the relationship between how, much, how many calories you take and how many calories you're burning. So it's looking at RMR, which is resting metabolic rate. So what they did was they took studies where they, people had cut their calories by about 10 to 15%, for example, and then measured how many calories they were burning. And what they found was that they're burning about 10 or 15% less. So therefore, if you're eating 10% fewer calories, but burning 10% fewer calories, your overall weight is not going to increase. Because remember, in most of these studies, they're not paying attention to what they're eating, simply the total number of calories. In fact, their conclusion is that they can state with some certainty that a decrease in energy expenditure is a universal response to energy restriction, which translates into if you eat fewer calories, your body will burn fewer calories. And that's a universal response. So if that happens, then of course, the body fat is minimally changed. So the question is, why doesn't it work? Why doesn't ca cutting calories work? And it's really because it's a very simplistic way of thinking of things. When you're looking at calories, it's really just the sort of proximate cause. That is, if you think about an analogy, for example, suppose you suffer from alcoholism, you might say, for example, that, hey, it's simply a problem of too much alcohol in versus too little alcohol out, right? So the solution is to just drink less alcohol. Well, that's wrong. That in fact never works. Telling somebody who has alcoholism to just drink less alcohol is guaranteed to not work. Why? Because you haven't gone into the deeper reason why they are drinking the alcohol. Perhaps they're addicted. Perhaps they're depressed. Perhaps they had some post-traumatic stress disorder, in which case they need counseling or Alcoholics Anonymous. So you see that you have to get into the deeper reason, not simply say it's alcohol in and alcohol out. And the same situation exists with calories. If you simply, if you have a problem of weight gain, and you say it's too many calories in versus too few calories out, the solution is not just to say, eat fewer calories, because your body will just burn fewer calories. 